Hello, good morning all. So as per your request, I decided to take the class as per the uh, blackboard method. Okay, so I will uh, teach you by giving lecture instead of PPTs. Okay, so our first module deals with BJT. What is a BJT or we call it as a transistor. Okay, so what is a BJT? BJT is a, uh, the full form is bipolar junction transistor. BJT is bipolar junction transistor. So what do you mean by this bipolar? Because here it has two charge carriers that is current conduction is via two charge carriers that is electrons and holes okay bjt is a bipolar uh, current carrier so it has electrons and holes for the current conduction and what about junction in a diode how how have we studied on diode last class last class in a diode we are taking a p layer and an n layer together and because of the diffusion of the charge carriers a depletion region will be there so this depletion region or there will be only one junction but here there are two junctions in a bgt and what is a transistor transistor comes from the name transfer of resistance transfer resistance so we will de discuss the same in detail okay so i will draw a structure of the bjt unlike the diode now we are having two junctions isn't it so i have an emitter then i have a base which is thin so this is my emitter region base i have three layers and this is my collector region so i am using n p n transistors n p n transistors we know that the direction of the current flow okay so here it is like this if it is if the symbol is like this this is the emitter terminal this is the base terminal and collector terminal if the arrow is facing outward then it is an npn transistor and what will be the symbol for pnp transistor the arrow will be inward so i'm drawing this so this is my base this is my collector this is my emitter and the arrow will be facing inwards this arrow shows the direction of the current flow okay so basically our transistor this is the symbol for the transistor this is the layout and for an npn transistor a p layer is embedded in between two n layers okay so what is the speciality of this layer here i am taking e a terminal outside from each the section and I am naming it as emitter, base and the collector. From the diagram itself you know that here my emitter region is smaller than my collector N region but this is highly doped or heavily doped with charge carriers. Okay, This is heavily doped with charge carriers and but uh, there is one more n layer that is the collector region which is having a larger size than the emitter but it is intermediately doped okay so this is intermediately doped region whereas emitter region is a highly doped region so since this is highly doped we know that what will be the resistance the resistance will be very low because large number of current carriers are there it will be conducting so the resistance uh, will be very low whereas here the number of current carriers are very less compared to emitter because it is intermediately doped so how will be the resistance the resistance will be a high value and now the remaining portion is the base so what is this base base is a p type material so it will be lightly doped so p type material it will be lightly doped so as we have studied in the diode when this n region and p region come towards uh, 
face to face then because of the diffusion there will be a junction here same there will be a junction here so i say there are two junctions in bjt that is junction j1 and j2 okay so this is related to emitter and base we call it as emitter base junction or emitter junction and this j2 is uh, the connection between uh, collector and base so we call it as a collector junction so we have two junctions if i see if we are looking deep into this we can say that this is an n region and p region a junction in between we have studied the same in somewhere else last class isn't it that is same diode so what with one junction that is n and p this will be a diode and this will this will be p and n so there are two diodes connected in series but opposite to another the equivalent circuit will be like this two diodes connected in series but oppositely reversely okay so here what is the purpose of doping this emitter to a high value high heavily doped emitter or the electrons in the emitter acts as a source for the current okay this acts as a source for the current carriers so this emitter emits the electrons for the current conduction okay and so uh, what is the next thing we have to study we know that we have three terminals so this is a three terminal device so we can say how many ports are there there are two ports i two ports okay so uh, either we can take give input here and take output from here or we can do in the reverse also so this is a transistor transistor is a two port device transistor is a two port device so how can we connect it either we can take a combination of emitter base as the input two port so first port i call it as an input so here i am calling it as an input port and here it is calling it as an output port so if this is the output either i can give emitter and base as input and base and collector as output or i can take base and emitter as input and emitter and collector as output or base and collector as input and collector as and emitter as output okay so we have the three combinations possible see here here i am taking if i am taking the first combination then i can say my base is common to input and output so if my base is common to input and output i can call this configuration as common base configuration so i can say this configuration as common base configuration because the base is common to the input and output terminals similarly in the second case emitter is common to the input and output so i can say my um, configuration as common emitter configuration similarly in the last case the collector is common to the input and output so i can say this configuration as a common collector configuration so a transistor can be worked in three different configuration depending upon the terminals which are common to the input and output okay so we have to study these three configurations that is common base common emitter and common collector configuration so in the first case what i am going to do is i am going to take first one that is common base configuration so what will happen for a common base configuration the same thing i am drawing okay the same npn diode i am drawing npn diode so this is my base common base isn't it so emitter so i'm going to tell you about common base configuration so this is the emitter base and collector okay so what will happen the base should act as a common between the input and output so this is the input and this is the output input and output so for a transistor to work in an active mode i hope you remember last class isn't it see same here we have three terminals eh? we have three 
terminals that is base emitter and collector okay and we have two types of biasing we studied of two types of biasing what are the two types of biasing first one was a forward biasing and second one was reverse biasing forward biasing and reverse biasing so we have three terminals and we have two junctions so in between base and emitter it is junction j1 and in between uh, base and collector or uh, emitter and collector we have junction j2 if it is base emitter so the common emitter configuration so we have two junctions i can either we can employ uh, forward biasing to the junction or reverse biasing to the junction so similarly here we have two junctions and two biasing so four combinations are possible for a transistor four combinations are possible so both the junctions can be either reverse biased both the junctions can be forward biased or one junction can be reverse biased and another can be forward biased so four configurations is possible either both junctions can be forward biased uh, or both junctions can be reverse biased or junction j1 as forward biased and output junction j2 as reverse biased or junction j1 as reverse biased and output junction j2 as forward biased four biasing conf types are possible or four modes of working are possible in the first class in the diode i have already told you current conduction occurs only when the diode is forward biased so the conduction occurs in a diode only when the diode is forward biased and in case of reverse biasing even though minority current carriers are there but the minority current flow is much much lesser that will be in some micro ampere so we can't say the diode conducts in reverse biased direction but it conducts only in forward biased direction so same happens for the transistor also the transistor has two junctions so both junctions can be forward biased both junctions can be reverse biased or one of the junction can be forward biased or reverse biased okay so if both junctions are reverse biased then what will happen if both junctions are reverse biased that i will talk first okay so what i am going to do is i have first i am going to tell about four modes of operation so the, we have two junctions input junction and output junction that is junction j1 and j2 first we know that in a diode for conduction occurs when it is forward biased so what i am going to do is first i am going to forward bias both junctions i am going to forward bias both junctions after that i will study what happens when both junctions are reverse biased and then i will uh, employ the what is it the combinations junction j1 is forward biased and junction j2 is reverse biased or junction j1 is reverse biased and junction j2 is forward biased okay so we have one two three four four configurations possible for two junctions okay so if i am drawing it in an axis like this if i am drawing it in an axis so junction j1 similar to junction j1 i am writing it as input input voltage if junction j1 is the input junction so we are providing input voltage so if i am forward biasing this is my if i am forward biasing junction j1 it will be in this axis and so this will be reverse biased and for junction j2 or i can say this is output voltage we see Mm, then i can say this is a positive side so this is forward biased and this will be reverse biased okay uh, just unnilla this is very simple so we have two junctions and we have two types of biasing so two junctions can select any any one from the four combination two forward biased two reverse biased one forward biased and reverse biased that can be first junction forward biased and second junction reverse biased or first junction reverse biased and second junction forward biased uh, 
any of the four combination can be selected so if i am drawing it in an x y axis uh, two dimensional graph then this is my input junction biasing that is input voltage so the positive side it is forward biasing and the negative side it is reverse biasing similarly this is my output voltage or y axis that is the positive side it is forward biasing and negative side it is reverse biasing so what happens if both junctions are forward biased what happens when both junctions are forward biased that is the first case so when both junctions are forward biased we know when a junction is forward biased we know uh, in a diode current conduction occurs when a junction is forward biased similarly if both junctions are forward biased then large number of free electrons will enter the region large number of free electrons will enter okay how see here if i am doing forward biasing then i should give here n n type okay wait i will draw here once more okay for easiness so this is my n p n isn't it so this is my common terminal this is my input output so when both junctions are forward biased then i should give negative to n and positive to p similarly here i should give positive to p and negative to n this will be my circuit diagram when both junctions are forward biased this is also forward biased and this is also forward biased so since this junction is forward biased the large number of electrons will flow into the base region similarly this junction is also forward biased so large number of electrons from the collector also enters into the base region so uh, the both the electrons from the emitter and the collector will uh, be uh, will join at the base and come out of the base okay so uh, what will be the total current there will be a large amount of current coming okay so when both junctions are forward biased there will be a large amount of current large amount of current coming in the from the device okay so this region large amount of current comes so we can call i will call this region as a saturation region okay what happens when large amount of current comes what is our requirement is we have uh, we have worked on this transistor for the purpose of amplifier okay this transistor is invented for amplifying ac signals in a tv or a radio okay i have already told you in 1951 the work started in 1947 and in 1957 they have found out the junction type um, transistor in bell laboratory by shockley and two other persons so why they have i uh, found out this particular transistor in order to amplify the ac signals what is the condition for a proper amplifier amplifier means in a, in the input we will give a low signal and the output should be a large signal okay the input should be a low signal and output should be a large signal which should be the exact multiplication of the input signal but this won't happens in this saturation region when both junctions are forward biased large amount is current is flowing and the uh, la as large amount of current is flowing what will happen uh, when the current carriers uh, increases similarly the temperature also increases the temperature increases means the characteristics also vary so it is not possible to work when both junctions are forward biased or i should say the transistor will goes to the saturation region it will goes to the saturation region so this point you will understand it later in our classes so just you have to remember when both junctions are forward biased large amount of current flows and it is not good for our transistor so we don't employ this working region so this is saturation region when both junctions are forward biased then what happens when both junctions are reverse biased 
the opposite happens when both junctions are reverse biased only small amount of current so what will happen if both junctions are reverse biased so i am now drawing with our transistor symbol so if i am drawing this is emitter this is collector this is base so if i am giving um, reverse biasing so emitter should be connected to the positive terminal n should be connected to the positive and p should be connected to the negative same here we are connecting like this so this is the emitter junction also reverse biased and the collector junction also reverse biased okay so this i am working talking for common base mode which i have told here the base is acting common for the input terminal and output terminal so when both junctions are reverse biased what will happen is hence this is reverse biased then what happens when reverse biasing occurs uh, here when reverse biasing this is n and p this is the depletion reagent reverse biasing means positive negative positive terminal is connected to the cathode and negative terminal is connected to the anode so the electrons will be attracted to the positive terminal so the depletion region widens okay and the current conduction will not be there uh, the oh, current conduction will be there it will be only due to the presence of minority current carriers only small amount of current will be produced when both junctions are reverse biased okay when both junctions are reverse biased only small amount of current will be uh, flowing through the circuit because of the minority charge carriers and maybe because of the surface leakage also okay so how will this minority current carriers flow because of the uh, from the temperature when the car, car, current carriers flow because of their kinetic energy their bombards and heat energy will be produced and this electrons other electrons absorbs this heat energy and its kinetic energy will be enhanced like that the current carriers will flow but this current flow is very low very very low and uh, it will but this current uh, carriers are very low and there will be approximately no current flow through the transistor when both the junctions are reverse biased okay so now so when both the junctions are reverse biased this is the junction so a very small amount of current flow or the current flow is absolutely equal to zero or due to the current flow is due to minority charge carriers okay so this region there is no current flow so i can call it as a cut off region so this is the cut off region cut off region occurs when both the uh, junctions are reverse biased okay so cut off region occurs when both the junctions are reverse biased now we should know what happens when both uh, when one of the junction is forward bias and the other is reverse bias what happens when one of the junction is forward bias and other is reverse bias so i am drawing again first i am taking junction input as input junction as forward biased so this is j1 i am taking this is n p in emitter base this is my base terminal collector terminal and emitter terminal okay so this will be heavily doped this is heavily doped and this is intermediately doped and this is p region that is very lightly doped okay so i am representing only the majority current carriers in the diagram so first what is it my input junction is forward by so when i am giving forward by saying that is n should be connected to the negative terminal and p should be connected to the positive terminal okay so what will happen when i am giving uh, uh, forward by this here it is forward by like see here it is forward biased n is connected to negative terminal so this negative terminal repels the electron so what will happen the electron will move move to this place that is the electrons will cross the uh, junction and it will move to this place when it is forward biased so 
as a result some holes are there this holes will be recombined with this electrons and as a result some electrons will be recombined by the holes in the base region but majority will sustain here because there is no holes for the recombination at the same time what happens is we are giving we are giving a reverse biasing to the output junction we are giving a reverse biasing to the output junction i hope you understood what i am saying when the emitter junction is forward biased that is here there is a barrier potential of 0.7 volt if this value 0.7 uh, if the forward biasing given is greater than this 0.7 volt then large amount of the majority carriers diffuses across the junction and these electrons some of these electrons very some of these electrons will recombine with the holes in the lightly doped base region and the other electrons will exist here for some time okay so other electrons will exist here for some time and then what happens in the output region in the output junction we are for reverse biasing so this p should be connected to the n terminal and n should be connected to the positive terminal or cathode should be connected to the positive terminal here it is not cathode it is c collector collector okay so what will happen there is a large number of electrons present here there is a large number of electrons present here and there is an n terminal here and there is my this is also intermediately docked electrons here this electrons will move to the this electrons will move to this battery and what will happen the as a result these electrons will cross the barrier and it will move to this battery so there will be a current flow then the current flow direction will be ic okay so i am explaining it once more when a collector diode is reverse biased when a collector diode is reverse biased then uh, most of the electrons here because we are giving a positive polarity here so the electrons here will be attracted to the positive terminal therefore most of the electrons in the base region are pushed into the collector layer and this collector layer then flows to the external positive lead so there will be a steady stream of electrons leaving the collector okay so there will be a steady stream of electrons leaving the collector terminal and uh, entering the battery so what will happen the what will happen this um, there will be a current flow okay so the depletion layer pushes a large number of electrons in the collector and this electrons leave the collector and flow through the positive terminal of the voltage so as a result this number of current flow um, I should repeat once more of the current direction. So what was the current direction here? Here because of the negative terminal the electrons are repelled. Okay. So because of the negative direction the electrons are repelled to here. So the current direction will be in the opposite direction. Okay. So this is IB. So I, sorry IE. IE is a source of electrons. So here I can write it as IE. Okay, and what is here? Here it is. What is this? This is N. This electrons are repelled here. So that current direction is opposite that that is IB. And here what is happening? The electrons are flowing into the positive terminal which means that the conventional current flow is opposite to here isn't it because the electrons are flowing in this direction so the current flow should be here like this okay so i am highlighting it the current this is ie this is ib and this is ic so 
I am applying Kirchhoff's current law at this junction. Then I can say IE is equal to IB plus IC. So I can say IE is equal to IB plus IC. Okay. So um, the, this, that's why I said this acts as an emitter, acts as a source of electrons and the collector is the output current. Since the base is very lightly doped, the current flow will be or the recombination happens is some two percentage only the rest all the electrons will be got at the output collector terminal so i can say my ie will be approximately equal to no no i should say my output current ic will be approximately equal to ie but it will always it will never be equal or it will be always less but it will be approximately equal to ie or i should say my current ie it splits into two that is ib and ic this ib will be only two to three percentage of the total current and the rest 95 percentage more than 95 percentage is at got at the collector terminal so we can say ie is equal to ib plus ic or the collector current is approximately equal to the emitter current but it is very less in the magnitude okay so ie is equal to ic plus ib and then i should say one more thing what is the current here it is ic okay so here this current is ic this current is because of this minority sorry because of this majority current carriers isn't it this is because of the majority current carriers or i should say here i told you ic is approximately equal to ie or the efficiency or amplification because ie here it is the input is ie here the input is ie and the output current is ic okay so what is the amplification the main purpose of the transistor is to work as an amplifier so this input should be amplified at the output this input should be amplified at the output through the collector okay so the amplification factor or i am calling that factor as alpha amplification factor alpha should be equal to ic by ie if i am notating the amplification factor then alpha equal to ic by ie or i can say ic is equal to alpha ie okay so my collector current ic or my output current ic should be equal to my output current IC should be approximately equal to alpha into IE. Okay, so one portion. Okay, but we have to notice that this current, this IC e comprises of two charge carriers, isn't it? Because the transistor, in the transistor we say it is bipolar. The current conduction is due to two charge carriers. So we have considered the majority charge carriers, that is the uh, electrons. Okay, from the electron conduction of electrons, we are saying that alpha is equal to IC by IE or the collector current due to the majority charge carrier is the collector current due to the majority charge carrier is alpha IE. There is a small current due to the minority charge carriers also. That minority charge carriers we can call it as ICO. Minority charge carriers ICO. So the current collector current IC I can say it as it is also due to the minority current carriers. We call this as reverse current okay, or leakage current reverse current or leakage current it can be due to the surface leakage or due to the presence of minority charge carriers so i see the equation for output current i can write it as alpha ie plus ico i can write the equation as ic is equal to alpha ie plus ico okay so uh, we have found out the equation for the current uh, gain that is uh, 
alpha is equal to output current IC by IE and we are representing it as for our work we are representing this for our common base configuration so we were telling about the different modes of working so the input is forward biased and output is reverse biased this region we call it as active region this region we call it as active region and here the transistor will work as an amplifier because the transistor will work as an amplifier in this region the current amplification factor is e less than 1 the current amplification factor alpha will be always less than 1 but there will be a voltage amplification because we know that the current ie the input voltage will be equal to um, ie and the resistance here but the output voltage will be ic into r okay low resistance here so there will be uh, cur uh, current amplification is less than 1 alpha value is less than 1 uh, for voltage amplification I will solve a problem with the load uh, here one load impedance will also come that I will solve a problem and you will understand what happens when the voltage amplification occurs so this is active region now we have to discuss upon the last configuration or last mode of operation that is junction j1 is forward by junction j1 is reverse bias that is junction j1 is reverse biased and junction output junction is forward biased to this region in this region what we what is happening is here this will be uh, reverse biased but the other junction will be forward biased so because of the reverse biasing the current flow will be only due to the minority charge carriers but here there will be a current flow so this will work as a reverse active region this will work just opposite to this active region or we call it as reverse active region reverse active region so for a transistor to work we will employ in the active region to amplify the signals okay so this is all for the first video and i will give the second video in the next class okay thank you